Hello, welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm Jason DeFossi along with Dale and Zartman. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building on the last segment where we teams came in and we removed that fire blanket, we propped it and lifted this vehicle up, we located the hole created from that heat and fire, and we elected to fill the bucket. We may find ourselves in a scenario where we cannot lift the vehicle to the desired height. So we're going to change our tactics and we're going to show you something different. And Dalen's going to review those techniques with you now. Dalen? Yeah, this is all about improving our access to that vent point. So we're going to increase or improve the orientation of the vehicle by continuing to rotate it into a lateral position. It's important that we apply our technical rescue concepts when we do this. So we move an inch, we want to stabilize an inch. In this application, we're going to go high rigging points on the A and C pillars near to the roof lines. We're going to use a V-bridle so that we're sharing that load and distributing it properly. In this particular case, we're going to use a grip hoist, but a grip hoist, a winch, a chain hoist, any applications that a fire department has for pulling and hauling operations, we're going to deploy. Uh, we're on the roof line of the vehicle, so we still need to maintain nozzle placements for protection of the operators, protection of the equipment, all the above. When we initiate this, this roof line movement, and we start to rack the vehicle over into that lateral position. We're going to close in on that break point where the vehicle could drift over to the roof line and potentially come all the way across. In a real world scenario, with the vehicle being on fire and no victims being in the vehicle, this is relatively inconsequential. So don't overthink or overcomplicate the rescue sequence. If we're going to apply proper technique and we have accessibility on the roof line in a safe manner, meaning there's no active fire production coming across the roof line. Then we're gonna go ahead and position a stabilizer or a strut on that roof line. As the vehicle comes into that near lateral position, we're gonna orient that strut, it's gonna be slightly overextended, and then as we compress with the tensioning element to improve that orientation, we're gonna draw down the strut. That's gonna give us a tension buttress combination on the roof line side of the vehicle. It's gonna leave the floor line side of the vehicle completely accessible. Again, because of the way we're lifting, the bucket point is gonna be at the top end of the load. So now we can approach that vent point and have much greater access to apply our cooling patterns. When you apply your cooling pattern, don't just park your nozzle on the hole. Remember that battery packs are compartmentalized with modules. Shoes, in shoe boxes, in shoe shelves, in shoe stores. We want to make sure that as we approach that hole, we are maneuvering the nozzle to work left, right, up and down to try and cool as much of the interior of that battery pack as possible. That's awesome, Dale. And so what we're going to have now is we're going to have the team come in and execute those techniques and those different types of disciplines to elevate and move this vehicle to a side resting position so we can fill the bucket. In transitioning to better access to the vent point, we're going to initiate the lift. We've attached anchor points to the A and C pillar joints on the roof line and the grip hoist is going to initiate movement to start moving the vehicle into a lateral position. We've ensured that we've chalked well on the pivot point or the downside of the vehicle and the lifting movement commences. As the vehicle load comes up, the nozzleman wants to back up and put himself into a safer position in case we lose the load as the load progresses. We're making the final transition to the side resting point. Because we've rigged to the A-pillar, which is a partial moving point and not a pivoting point, the rescuer is having to tension the ratchet strap while he's lowering on the strut. As we lower on the strut for the controlled movement, we're helping haul the vehicle into the lateral position with the tensioning element, which is the grip hoist. Once the vehicle is fully positioned into a secure lateral rest, we're gonna stop on strut, and then we'll increase tension, stop on strut, then we'll increase tension on the grip hoist, which will create a full tension buttress. When we identified the vent point, the nozzleman will approach the vehicle now with much better access, close up his stream and bail for a controlled flow, and then attempt to manipulate that pattern around inside of that penetrating hole to get full cooling applications inside of the battery pack. So as per the demonstration that the team has just presented to you, a more radical move placing the vehicle onto its side for better access to fill the bucket in the case of the battery. This allows us to better access and cool and fight any additional fires from this side position. While technically it can pose some challenges, the end result is to get the vehicle on its side in a safe way, 
present some cooling operations and or fill the bucket. Dale, is there anything else to add to that? Yeah, remember to stay true to your primary mission and don't over rescue or over complicate. Uh, in today's demonstration, we illustrated a very controlled technical rescue reorientation of the vehicle with the strut uh, providing resistance and a full tension buttress. But in a real world scenario, with no victims in the vehicle, transitioning the vehicle all the way into an inverted position is not problematic. You still have access to your penetrating hole or your vent point, and you can still aggressively cool the battery pack. That's great, Dalen. And as always, thank you for watching Fire Engineering Training Minutes.